The following message is a production of Tony Broom Ministries. Our title for this session is Traits of a Godly Leader. We really need some godly leaders in our world today. We need people to stand up for the Lord and be counted. We're in Joshua chapter 1. In our central truth, God provides godly leaders to tend His flock. He always provides godly leaders to tend His flock. And we think of the flock being the church, and of course it is. The church, the bride of Christ, that's His flock. God has godly leaders provided to take care of His people. Joshua was not only a leader who would take care of what we might call a flock, but he was a civil leader as well as a spiritual leader. He had God and government, both under his realm, under his jurisdiction. And Israel is the only religion, the only government who that will work with. We've had other people that tried it, and we have a group right now, they call themselves a church, Roman Catholic outfit. They claim to have God and government all in one. But it will not work. It is like the Roman Empire. And it will come to fruition again during the tribulation period, the revived Roman Empire. But it will not work only under Israel and the true God, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That's the only way it will work. And it will work when Jesus comes back to the earth again and sets up His kingdom. That will be God and government all together like God meant for it to be. So when you hear about Joshua or these other leaders being godly leaders, we have to remember that they had God as their God, not only in the church, we would think of the church and tabernacle worship part of Israel, but they were godly leaders in the government part of Israel. So if you hear about that, that God is in the government, and you wonder why things are so different now, it's because it's a different economy. We have turned our back on God and are turning our back on God. And that's why it's not working. And it will not work. No matter what they do, they can try to implement laws. They can try to pass legislation. They can come up with bills. They can amend the Constitution. They can put down all these things that they think people ought to go by. But it will not work until they put God back in the place of government where He ought to be. And they put Him on His throne, not that they can put Him there, but just in our way of talking and understanding that they put God on the throne of their life and heart in our nation where He needs to be. That's the only way that it's going to work. Our Bible focus, be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. What a promise from God's Word, Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. God had given him this promise. Be strong. Be of good courage. God is with you wherever you go. And this is something not only for a government leader, not only for a pastor, not only for a bishop, not only for a deacon, an admin council, an elder, but it's good for every believer. We have the same promise that Joshua had. We may not be leading a nation. We may not be trying to run for an office. But we have the same promise that Joshua had. If you are strong and if you are of good courage, you can be strong, not because you're strong like Hercules, but you can be strong because you have the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob on your side. And you can be strong and you can be of a good courage because the Lord has promised that He will be with us. Isn't it good to know, and I know that we don't think about it all the time in that perspective, but isn't it good to know that God is with you wherever you go, whatever you do? The same God that was with Moses, with Joshua, is with Abraham. He is with you and I, because He is the same God. There is no different God. He is the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He was with Moses, He was with Joshua, and He's with you and I today. The first section... Godly leaders are commissioned. You have to have that commission from God, whether you are a leader, whether you are whoever you are. All of us are commissioned in some ways. We may not be commissioned to be a pastor or to be someone who is a head of a conference. We may not be commissioned to be a commissioner in office. 
But we are commissioned by the Lord. All of us who have come into the family of God, who have joined the army of the Lord, all of us are commissioned. He gives us the great commission. Go out into the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. And we're all commissioned. The first four verses. Joshua chapter 1. Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, into the land which I give to them, even to the children of Israel. Joshua, Moses, my servant is dead. Now he could have stopped right there. Moses, my servant is dead. Might as well quit. Might as well give it up. Might as well throw in the towel. And Moses, all that great hand in the wilderness, the one who parted the waters, lifting up his rod, and God parted the waters, the one who brought water out of the rock, the one who did those great and mighty things, the one who gave us the Ten Commandments, he's dead. What are we going to do now? God admitted, and he told him, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. That's what we have to do. We can't quit just because somebody else quits. We can't back up just because somebody else backs up. We have to stand up for God, no matter if anybody else stands up for God or not. If those around us, the old soldiers, they may not die, they just fade away. But they do die physically. And people get older and they retire even from Christian work, their active service. They still serve God as long as we live, but people are getting older and they're becoming more faint. And you and I need to stand up and take our place as those who would worship and praise God. Not just getting all the good out of this world that we can and enjoy and pleasure. We've got to stand up for God and live for God now while we have the opportunity. Arise and go over this Jordan, thou and the people of Israel, to the land which I will give you. And he gives him this promise, Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses. Praise God for what a promise this is. You start walking and you start talking. You start talking about name it and claim it and grab it and blab it. Every place that the sole of your foot sets upon is already yours. I've given it to you. From the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea, toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. God had said, all this land is yours. I've given it to you. I've given it to Abraham and to his descendants. And I want to say on record again, that land belongs to them this very day. I don't care what Gaza says about it. I don't care what the Arab says about it. I don't care what Jordan says about it. I don't care what anybody says about it. All the land belongs to them. God gave it to them. They will go back there again. They will possess that land again. They will live in that land again forever. And God promised it to them, and it belongs to them, and nobody can do anything about it. That's their land. God gave it to them. Godly leaders are commissioned. They're set forth by the Lord. Moses had said... Let God send a leader and let him choose a leader from his people, knowing that I must die. There has to be somebody who will stand up, not take my place, but stand up, take their place for God. We always think about somebody taking our place. Yes, somebody can take our place tomorrow, but the thing is that they're not taking our place. They're taking their place. They're standing up for God. Don't worry about taking somebody else's place. You just take your place for God and let God handle the place you're taking. Godly leaders are courageous. Courage. Over and over he tells him in this passage, in this chapter. Be strong. Be of good courage. And I've read four or five times just in the verses that we have today. That he tells him to be strong. He tells him to be of good courage. It takes courage to live for God. It takes courage. Courage to stand for God. And what is courage? Courage is the ability, the God-given ability, to face life situations in the day that we live. That's what courage is. It's the God-given ability to face life's situations in the day that we live. It takes courage. It doesn't cost you anything to be saved, but it costs you a lot to live for God. 
It takes courage to be able to stand for God in the day that we live. We are living in perilous times when people are going against the things of God. And just because they don't get struck dead by lightning, they say, see there, God didn't do anything to me. So they get a little more bold, a little more brash, and they start doing things that you wouldn't ever think about. Putting people in jail who just stand for God and they're innocent. You wouldn't think that that would happen in America, but it does. And lawyers in our nation are so crooked they can't even get an honest person out of jail. That's how crooked they are. But I serve a God who the Apostle Peter and the Apostles were put in jail. They hadn't done anything wrong either. They were put in jail. And the God sent His angel and delivered them out of jail. And I'm crazy enough to believe that the God I serve still is able to do the same thing now as He did then. Hallelujah to His name. I still serve the God who's able to open them prison doors. The soldiers didn't even know what happened. They opened the prison doors... Peter's chain fell off. He went out and he was delivered. But what happened? They were praying. You think that people are praying. Some people are praying, certainly. But if we would get a hold of God, God could send His angel and get them out of jail. God can set His people free. He set Moses and the children of Israel free from the land of Egypt. I know that He's able to set them free this very day. It takes courage. There shall no man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Glory in the highest. Praise God. The same God has promised us that if you come unto me, I will in no wise cast you out. He's promised us I will never leave you nor forsake you. He's promised us I'll be with you to the end of the age, to the end of the world. And he tells Joshua the same thing. I will not forsake you. I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. The same way that I was with Moses, I will be with you. That's a good comfort because God was certainly with Moses. He spoke to him face to face. He talked to him and he walked with him and he showed him how to lead his people. And he was with him. And he told Joshua, I'll be with you the same way that I was with Moses. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. It's important to know that Joshua was to be successful. Yes, Moses gave the law. Yes, he led them as far as he could lead them. He brought them to the edge of Jordan. But he couldn't go any further. God said you can see the land, but you're not permitted to go over there. And so Moses had done all he could do. He led the people as far as he could go. And now it's up to Joshua. It's up to God ultimately, of course, but it's up to Joshua to be able to lead these people out of their wilderness into the promised land. It's up to God ultimately, just like us. If we have things in life that we need, it's up to Him to help us. But He uses people and He used Joshua. You will divide for them This inheritance, this land, their promised land, which I've given them, they will inherit it, and you will divide it for an inheritance to them. It has to be successful. And God saw that it was. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to the law which Moses, my servant, commanded thee. According to all the law. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. Got to stay true to God's Word. If you want to lead God's people, you got to stay true to God's Word. Can't cave in to liberalism. Can't cave in to easy, cheap believism. Got to stand true to God's Word. Because God's Word will never fail you, but you can't claim the right relationship with God if you don't stand true to His Word. Some people have not stood true to God's Word. Then when all the wilderness and all the attacks come against them, they say, wait a minute, where's the Lord? Well, you left Him. You left His Word. You didn't stand true to His Word. You've got to stand true to God's Word. This is the Word that I've given to Moses. To all the law, you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, 
commanded thee, Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper whithersoever thou goest. And here's a classic verse from the book of Joshua that many people have memorized. God bless them for doing it because it's not the shortest verse in the Bible. I think most of us can memorize Jesus wept. This one's a little bit longer than that. But God bless them for memorizing this verse. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then shalt thou have good success. Do you know that success is mentioned in the Bible very few times, and this is one of the places that it's mentioned. To be successful, we have to stay true to God's Word. You can try. Many of you have been in the business world. You can try to make it. You can do pretty well sometimes, corporately speaking. But it takes the hand of God to be upon what you do. You've got to have the hand and the blessing of God for it really to matter. This book of the law will not depart out of your mouth. You've got to talk about it. The book of the law, and we would say now the Word of God. People say, well, I believe that good old Bible. I believe the good book. I believe that Bible. But they never talk about it. They never live by it. They never go by it. You can't believe in something that you don't know. You've got to go by the Word of God. And in order for you to go by it, you've got to know what it's all about. And none of us will ever know all about what it's all about. But we can know enough about what it's about to go by it and believe in it and live by it and love it. You can lay down with it, you can die by it, and you can get upright by it too. It's God's Word. It will not depart from your mouth. You will meditate therein, day and night. Meditate on the Word. Think about the Word. Praise God for the Word. Rejoice in the Word that you may observe to do. You can't do if you if it's not a big part of your life and your heart. According to all that is written therein, for then... Thou shalt make thy way prosperous, then shalt thou have good success. You want to prosper, you want to be successful, you want to do what God has for you to do, you have to stand on God's Word and believe in God's Word. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. I have commanded you, be strong and of a good courage. Well, how can I just be strong? If I'm weak, I feel weak. I look weak. I am weak. I know that I'm weak. I know that I have shortcomings. I know that I have failures. How can I just be strong? Well, I can be strong because He tells me to be strong. I can be strong because in my weakness, His strength is perfected. Oh, hallelujah. His strength is perfected in my weakness. God said, I'll take the foolish things of the world and confound the wise. That's why He chose me. <laughs> he takes the foolish things of the world to found the wise. Woo-hoo! And you can look at that mirror and find the same thing about you too. God has a special plan and purpose for us. Our name may not be Joshua, but He has a plan, He has a purpose, He has something for us this very day. And He's promised us His courage, He's promised us His strength, and He tells us not only to be strong and of good courage, but He says, don't be afraid. Be not afraid. Yeah, but all this is going on in New York. Yeah, but all this is going on in London and Moscow and all across the world. All this is going on in the courts and all this is going on in the jailhouse. He says, don't be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. Do not be confounded. It's so easy to get confounded because there's so many things that are going on against what we believe, what we stand for. And some of it is just, we say, out of the blue. It's not out of the blue, it's out of the black. It's out of the pits of hell. That's where it's coming from. And it doesn't make a lick of sense. And instead of us trying to unravel all that and find out what it's all about, he says, don't be confounded, don't be confused about all this. For the Lord, your God, is with you wherever you go. And the third section, godly leaders are followed. Don't follow some fruitcake. Don't follow somebody who don't know where they're going. Follow someone who stands for God and lives for God and loves God. 
our nation. We're following leaders, all right. We're following leaders that lead us right into hell. They act like they're glad about it. Have no respect for God, no respect for America and the nations of the world, no respect for their fellow man. They make laws, but it's one law making another law, one crook making a law for another crook. Godly leaders are to be followed. Verse 16, They answered Joshua, saying, All that thou commandest us we will do, and whithersoever thou sendest us we will go. Now they did that mostly. They were following the Lord. And the scripture says that all the days of Joshua and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, they served the Lord. According as we hearken unto Moses, in all things so will we hearken unto thee. Only the Lord thy God be with thee as he was with Moses. We want God to be with you just like he was with Moses. Whosoever he be that doth rebel against thy commandment, and wilt not hearken unto thy words in all that thou commandest him, he shall be put to death. Let us implement that in our nation today. If you don't serve God and do what's right, you're going to die and you're going to fry. Well, that is the way it's going to be. If you don't do right and serve God, you are going to die and you're going to fry. Only be strong and have a good courage. Wait a minute, I've heard that before. I've read that before. They have the same words to say that God said. Be strong. Be of good courage. Don't have to worry, Joshua. Don't have to go in and sit behind your desk wondering who's with you, if anybody's with you or not. We are with you. We're going to go where you tell us to go. We'll do what you tell us to do because we know the Lord is with you. And as long as the Lord's with you, we know everything's going to be all right and everything's going to prosper because we want to go in and we want to possess that land that God has given us. We want to possess it. We want to do what's right. We want to be what God would have us to be. And the Lord has a purpose. He sends them into that land, and they go into that land being conquerors. They go into that land victorious because they have a godly leader who will lead them in the way that's right. And God give us leaders in our nation, in our churches. Give us leaders who will lead us in the way of righteousness, in the way of the things that are right. Praise God for His wonderful work and for His wonderful word that He's given us. He's promised us blessing on top of blessing. And He will bless us this day if we will look to Him. Let the Word of God be in our mouth. Paul said it's the Word that we preach, the Word of faith that we preach. It's in our mouth and in our heart. The Word of faith that we believe and that we preach. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart, God raised Him from the dead, you'll be saved. This is a Word, the same Word that Moses had, the same Word that Joshua had. may not have had the faith implement and the faith power that we think about now, but it's the same Word. God had promised that word to Joshua. You meditate on the word. You have the word in your heart. You have the word. Not just on the coffee table. It's got to be before your eyes. It's got to be in your heart. And you meditate on that word. And it applies to every situation. It applies to the world that we live in. If God's word had the power to fix the world that they lived in, God's word still has the power to fix the world that we live in. And traits of godly leaders, they're still there today. We can't see it sometimes. It happens that things get covered up and the good people are not heard from like they should be. But God is still faithful. He still has His servants who are trusting in Him and who are worshiping Him and who are serving Him. And God is faithful to keep His Word. The preceding message has been a production of Tony Broom Ministries. 